Hello everyone, my name is Samantha Laranjo and I will be your moderator for today's webinar on design documentation and how to communicate design intent with your manufacturing partner. I want to thank you all for joining us for today's webinar and introduce you to our presenters, Amit Ball and Orlin Bates. Amit has been in the PCB industry for over 20 years. He is the Chief Revenue Officer at Sierra Circuits. His passion is to empower tech companies to achieve their visions and change the world. Rockets going into space, self-driving cars taking up the streets, cancer fighting medical devices, protecting the country, he is ready to build any circuit board. Orlin is a senior field applications engineer and has been in the field of PCB design since 1973 and has been with EMA since 2002. Orlin attended vocational tech school, earning a degree in drafting and design technologies. With years of PCB, printed wire design, DFM knowledge, and high volume manufacturing, Orlin is a highly skilled professional in the field of engineering physical design. Amit will start off the webinar with information on today's topic. Assuming we have time at the end, we will field some questions in a formal Q&A. Thank you for your attention, and now over to you, Amit. Okay, great. So I'm super excited to uh, be a part of this webinar today. I think there's a lot of good learnings that we have ready for the audience. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go through uh, the basics and Orlin's going to go into the tool itself and also uh, provide some insights there. So very, very excited uh, to have everyone here. Uh, you know, just as a high level, uh, documentation is uh, the basics, but it's not easy either. Um, sometimes it takes a few iterations to get the documentation correct. Um, especially in prototype phase. So we have uh, customers sending us requirements, um, both in fabrication drawings and assembly drawings and in emails. Um, so I highly discourage email uh, because it's then dependent on your account manager to relay that to manufacturing. You should always try and have everything in, in your uh, fabrication notes and assembly drawings and last resort you can have a readme file that goes through basics and also can give the any sort of special instructions that you don't necessarily want to put on your fab print so a readme file is always really good this is the table of contents for today um, again ask questions we'll be fielding um, you know, those questions and providing answers. Uh, I enjoy the questions. It helps me also refine our presentations and also learn from you guys. Uh, so please ask difficult questions as well as the easy ones. So one, one slide about CR circuits. So uh, we're really trying to round out our services to design engineers. So uh, if you look at this, uh, we have engineering tools. Um, these are free on our, on our website. Impedance calculators, material selectors, um, and uh, stack up a newly released stack up tool as well. Uh, so, and then uh, we also provide component sourcing services since this is such a big pain in the industry right now. And uh, DFA, DFM, DFT. Uh, services as well. So these are all value add services on top of our uh, fabrication and assembly capabilities. So if you've not used us before in the past, please take a look. We're a very capable uh, provider. So basically the PCB documentation ensures your successful manufacturing iteration uh, without basic questions back and forth and without any miscommunication in terms of manufacturing. So it's a very key step in your design layout process uh, to get the notes correct. And the worst, the worst thing that any fabricator has to deal with is the designer doesn't understand the notes that are on the drawing and that could lead to mistakes as well as 
the fabricator, um, you know, building something that, or having constraints that aren't really necessary, just making it much more difficult for the fabricator. So every, today, in today's time, still, every note is read by a human and a process decision is made based on those notes. So that's how important notes are. Okay, so enough of that uh, speech. Um, you know, basic things that uh, need to be on drawings are dimensions, any sort of uh, overall dimensions, as well as intricate dimensioning that's required, um, you know, any sort of, you know, detail in the drawing that you want to really blow up and show us what you what you mean. Um, all that Orlin can demo at, towards the end of the webinar. And, you know, in terms of the complete kind of packaging, we do need, um, you know, BOM, component XY data or placement file, assembly drawings, um, and the actual data itself. So without that, we can't really proceed forward. This is what uh, fabrication drawing the basics look like. Uh, again, if you don't want a full fabrication drawing or uh, you feel the need to not include your fabrication drawing, make sure you include a README which has the basics, which is layer order, um, material types, uh, if there's any impedance on the board, uh, if there's, you know, what is the surface finish that you would like, um, the solder mask color, if there's supposed to be uh, the silkscreen color, and if there's silkscreen on both sides. Uh, so, for example, if you say on your fab note that there should be silkscreen on both sides, and but the data that we get in your Gerber doesn't have two silkscreen layers, that gives the fabricator an opportunity to question and double check the documentation and the design package and come back with a, with a question. So that's the reason to have a README or a full fabrication drawing uh, to set yourself up for success. Again, just uh, general motherhood and apple pie, but important. Uh, of what should go into the fabrication drawing. And the most important thing is the IPC spec of what your board needs to, uh, what requirements your board needs to meet. So most people use the 6012 class two versus class three. And a class three is has more requirements that make the manufacturing of the board, could make the manufacturing of the board more difficult. So only specify class three if you actually need class three. Uh, so if this is again a copy paste of fab notes um, from a class three to a board that really only needs to be class two, um, you're doing more harm than good, um, you know, in relaying that information to your fabricator. Here's the stack of information. Uh, you know, most designers these days will interface with the fabricator and and get the stack up from the fabricator. So I think, um, you know, that's good. You can include that in your package. Uh, I think that's the right way to do it. Um, I think that, uh, you know, don't put in control dielectric unless you actually need control dielectric. And another note on your stack up, if you say your solder mask must be a minimum, let's say of one mil, then us as fabricators, a good fabricator will try and beat the one mil requirement, which means that uh, we might have to do two coats of solder mask, which inadvertently uh, you might be paying for, or it would take more time in process steps. So be careful of what you put in your stack up as the minimum requirements. Now, 062 plus or minus 10% is standard. Um, you know, one comment on the outer layer is that you start with a copper foil and then you plate on the surface and in the via at the same time. 
So the outer layer, really the finished copper weight on the outer layer is determined primarily by the, um, the plating in the via. So my advice is to leave the outer layer copper requirement um, in a range. So, you know, maybe say one to two ounces is okay for outer layer. And that way we can ensure we're getting enough copper in the via, which is very important for reliability, as well as we're not constrained by the amount, the, the upper copper weight. Okay. We also have our newly introduced stack, stack up design tool. And so it's really just a uh, database of stack ups that you can use uh, at your convenience. Um, we are 